Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecture about Thematic Roles. Thematic roles are relationships between events and individuals that express essentially the role that the individual is playing in the event. And thematic roles were one of the first real uh, uh, invasions of the semantics into the syntax. And they helped, ex they were help, you know, thought to explain a wide variety of syntactic generalizations and universals. Um, but uh, in more recent years, we've seen that uh, in the semantics, they're interesting generalizations, but they're not really things that exist. They're not really a part of the semantic theory, and they're not really necessary in and of themselves, um, or maybe a little bit. But this notion of thematic role um, is, use, is still useful for generalization, and it's still wi very widespread in the literature, so uh, we'll be talking about them. So what is a thematic role? Well, uh, they are, you know, they help us distinguish different roles of arguments in a, in a, in a predicate. So when we say something like uh, Bill uh, greeted Ted, then we can say that Bill is the greeter and Ted is the greet E. Right, the one being greeted. Of course, that's pretty straightforward. But if you look at different predicates, you see the pattern emerging. So if you say Lucinda slapped Eliza, Lucinda the subject is slap is the slapper. If you say Lucinda saw Eliza, Lucinda is the seer. And it doesn't matter what that verb is, if it's in the active voice at least, what whatever the verb is, the subject is going to be the one doing the action. And that's a generalization that's, that's pretty intriguing. Um, and so what we don't get are, in English are verbs that are the opposite. So there's, no ver so there's a verb slap, uh, where the slapper slaps the slappy, but there's not really a verb slap, where the, ver where the subject is the one being slapped by the slappy, by the slapper. Um, and that's, a, that's something that needs to be explained. And one of the thing, ways that was explained was using these thematic rules. And the idea is that there is a, a role not just for a grammatical subject, but for an agent. And the agent is the one that's doing this action. And the one that's undergoing the action is called a theme. Uh, at least this kind of action is called a theme. And in that case, will uh, tend to be an object. Now, in an intransitive, so Lucinda uh, sat on the bench, then in that case we would say that the, uh, uh, the subject is not an agent, um, and it would have a different thematic role. Now, there's a long list of thematic roles, and you can read those in the reading or the handout, um, but what, they're, what they help us do is help us understand, right, with the, the okay, with the help of syntactic theory, they help us understand how are how verbs link arguments to these rules and how they require the roles that they do. So take an example like put. Put requires three arguments. Why does it require three arguments? Well, because it, you know, in the syntax it says I need three arguments. So it can select for uh, it can you know, subcategorize for syntactic categories, but there are also semantic requirements. So you have to put the book you know, on the shelf and say I put the book on the shelf. It requires an agent. It requires a theme, the thing that's being put. And it also requires a location. Those are just the three things put has to have. And in English, you have to express all three of them. You can add adjuncts to express, say, an instrument or something like that. But these three have to be there. These are the arguments. But they have these semantic qualities. The subject is an agent. The theme, the object is a theme. And, the, uh, and this oblique is a location. But you can trust that to give. You know, so if you say, I gave the book to Marty 
So there, uh, Marty is still required, and we get an agent, a theme. But here, we don't want to say Marty is a location, because he's not a location. Instead, he's receiving the book, so we say he's the recipient. So here, the recipient is the subject, or the oblique. But there are verbs where the recipient is the object, right? the most obvious being the verb receive. So if we say that Marty received the book, he's not really the agent of the receiving event. I mean, it's not something that you do. Um, he's the recipient. And so it helps us understand these distinctions. It also helps us understand why we can say, you know, I, um, I laughed. But why a verb like laughed can't have an object. Why can't we just add an object? Um, I laughed, Bill. Right? Why can't, or why can't we add a second subject? I laughed, Bill, to mean I laughed and Bill laughed. Right? Well, it's because the thematic subcategorization um, of laugh is that it takes one argument, and that argument is an, an agent. Uh, and so, if we add this, it's not going to work. Um, it also explains why you can't say something like, greeted Bill. That's not grammatical. Why isn't that grammatical? Well, we can use the thematic rules to explain why. Um, greeted has two thematic roles, an, a greeter and a greedy. There's no greeting without a greeter. There's no greeting without a greedy. So you need two thematic roles, but there's only one DP. And one of the you know, classic rules of thematic roles is what's called the theta criterion, by which these thematic roles, or theta roles as they're called sometimes, um, the thematic role is assigned in a particular way. So the theta criterion requires that every theta role gets assigned and that only one DP can have it. So here, laughed only has one laugher because it's only got one thematic role. Here, greet has two thematic roles but only one argument is filled so we only get the one argument. So we can explain a lot of these facts uh, using these thematic rules. And in that case, they're very useful. Um, and uh, you know, there's a, num a large literature on exactly what the nature of these thematic rules are. Where are they in the grammar? Are they simply representations that linguists make? Are they um, characterizations about the, the linking uh, between, you know, just characterizations about the linking between roles and, and uh, uh, arguments? Or are they explicitly represented in the syntax and semantics? These are three different varieties. The Williams reading discusses them in more detail. Uh, but that's the introduction to thematic roles. There are different roles uh, that are linked to different arguments by different predicates. And what we'll want to try to understand going forward is, how does our semantics deal with them?